Let's face it. Jesus is not visible to our eyes. We don't hear him audibly with our ears. So because of that, we could make up a Jesus and yet it not be the real Jesus at the right hand of God. Okay, you just read chapter 30, and what I want to do now is dive a little deeper into this. This one is a riveting chapter because we're talking about a different Jesus. Paul made this statement to the Corinthian church. He said, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus. Now, he didn't say a different God. I think it's interesting that he said a different Jesus. Let's face it. Jesus is not visible to our eyes. We don't hear him audibly with our ears. So because of that, we could make up a Jesus and yet it not be the real Jesus at the right hand of God. You know, that story in the book, I'll never forget it. When I sat down in a chair by the pool and in the chair next to me was a businesswoman who was at a different conference. She heard that I was a minister, started telling me all about Jesus. And I knew almost within 30 seconds, this woman does not know Jesus. And that's when I said, do you see that guy across the pool? And I started describing him and he's married to that girl over there. And she said, how do you know him so well? I said, I've never met him. And she was like, what? Well, then how do you know him so well? I said, that's what I believe about him. And I said, you just told me about a Jesus for the last five minutes that is not the Jesus revealed in the scripture. And I remember it ended our conversation, but she was shaken. She was shaken. And yet, I've been with ministers. Ministers, not just churchgoers. Ministers who don't even know what the Word of God says because in conversation it comes up and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, that's, that's a pretty clear truth in the Scripture. And we have to choose. Are we going to really press in and obey God so that the real Jesus can be revealed? Or are we going to make a fictitious Jesus that basically gives us what we want? Now, that's what Israel did. They saw God's power in Egypt. They saw his miracles. But when they came across that Red Sea and Moses, the man who kept bringing them under conviction, went up to the top of the mountain for 40 days... They created a Jehovah, a Yahweh, that was totally different than the one who was on the throne of heaven. And they worshiped that Jehovah. They said, hey, Jehovah delivered us from Egypt. He did. But the Jehovah they made up was a Jehovah that would give them wild parties, sexual immorality, and things that don't please God. Let me tell you something. In the last days, Jesus said four times just in one chapter alone when the disciples asked him about the return of the Lord. Hey, tell us what it's going to be like. Four times he said, don't be deceived. There is one problem with deception, and that is this. It is deceiving. The person who is deceived believes with all their heart they're right, when in reality they're not. How do we protect ourselves from that deception that Jesus said would run so rampantly in the final days? by the fear of the Lord, by loving his commandments and obeying them instantly, obeying them when it doesn't make sense, obey them when we don't see a benefit, obey them even if it hurts, and obeying them to completion. That is how we protect ourselves from the deception that is going to run so rampant in these coming days.